in Martinsburg. And the aforementioned Phil McCoy joins us via telephone right now. Hello, Financial Phil. How are you? Uh, I'm living a dream, guys. How are you all? I'm just a little surprised at uh, 6.30 when we chatted on the phone. You told me nothing of Ada's success there at the Berkeley County Youth Fair, Phil. What's up? <laughs> yeah, you heard of that, huh? Yeah. yeah. She's, uh, her, their grandmother, uh, both kids, all four of her granddaughters, and Ada may be the last one, cause they, but uh, every year they've, they've filled up the house with blue ribbons and however they rank them, but they got the grand champion last night, so... That was a that was a good ending if that's the if, if that is the end of Arliss Woodward's uh, run with uh, Berkeley County teaching these kids how to sew and such. But yeah, both my kids are well versed in, in that field. Well, you are a, a modest father, Phil. So does Grand Champion come with a with a crown or a scholarship or a trophy or? I, I think she got thirty bucks. But the in a ribbon, but it's it's more of the the pride you know to work up. And yeah, you're thinking of it, watching the kids come out with their pillowcases and so forth. And man, it just seemed like yesterday they were out there making making those those small designs. And now that she made a sports coat, uh, how do you make a sports coat by hand? You know, but uh, that's uh, that's what she did. So she ended up winning uh, winning an award. Now, does she normally make her own clothes, or does she just sew for the competition? No, she doesn't typically, but they do. They have often worn what they've made for the for the competition. So what they make doesn't, you know, after it comes home from the fair, they they do wear it and they do uh, they they use what they've worn, but making their own clothes. Now they'll they'll fix stuff, um, create things, and you know, you buy buy something if it doesn't fit, they'll they'll make it work, and they know how to, how to do that, and all because of their grandmother in the Berkeley County Fair. Were you were you there last night, Phil? I was, yes, yeah. sir. She, she does not ask you to model the clothes, does she? No, I've never been asked to model any clothes. They, they <laughs> model model the clothes themselves, but uh, no, they've never made. And I've, you know, that's always been in the back of my mind. Are they some uh, someday going to make something for a man and ask me to do it? And I'm glad they they haven't. They'll probably <laughs> lose. But uh, the the uh, they they model it themselves. Yeah, okay. Well, Phil, congratulations to you and to the family. It's been a good run, and um, you know what? The ability to sew is a skill that will benefit you your entire life. When I was in seventh and eighth grade, and they compelled us to take home ec for nine weeks each year, Miss Jean Schmidt was the home ec teacher. I remember her name to this day because if a button pops off a shirt or whatever, or I need to restitch a seam, I know how to do it. All because of Miss Jean yep. Schmidt. Yep, and they know how to cook too. They always put uh, they always put projects in on the on the other side there, and so they've they've done that for for years too. So good good skills they've learned from their bills passed down from her grandmother, who learned that from her mother. So it's always been pretty cool. Bill, last week was a bad week for the markets. Uh, first one in a while. We were on a pretty good roll there through the summer, but everything changed with the Fitch downgrade last week, Phil. Yeah, and my, most of it was the Fitch downgrade, and in the minute that we wanted to move past that downgrade and say, "Hey, let's see how our companies are performing," Amazon held up its end of the bargain. Apple did not, so Amazon was really the only good that came from last week. But I, I would uh, say that the jobs report that we got on Friday wasn't bad, but it needs confirmed. And what I mean by that is when the CPI numbers come out this, I think it's Friday. When the CPI numbers come out this Friday, will it confirm that that jobs report wasn't bad or didn't contribute to inflation? That's what we'd seen last month. If you remember the, uh, I think it was a Friday and Wednesday at that point, but jobs report came out on a Friday and where markets tumbled, but we gained it all back and then some because that CPI report was better than anticipated. So maybe now what, what that jobs report said to me and a lot of others was it was it slowed down enough to make us think that what the Federal Reserve is doing is working, but it wasn't so bad that it would make us afraid of a recession. So it was kind of kind of walked a tightrope, and but it still needs to be confirmed confirmed with that CPI number. And as the Federal Reserve has said, they're they're data driven, and this data part of that was Friday's jobs report, and the, but a big part will be Friday the CPI and then the PPI and the PC and all that fun stuff. For the next meeting on September 20th, what do they do? Will they increase rates again? Some are saying the majority of those think that there, if there is an increase, it will only be one more, and it would be sometime uh, in the fourth quarter, and that would be the last one before then the conversation starts to become: Do we start to cut rates 
to prevent going into a recession, and that's the tightrope that they've been walking. And more and more, last week notwithstanding, you know, last week was a bad week. You know, all three indices were down. Uh, I think the Dow was down over 1%, and the SP and NASDAQ was down over 2%. So the two main, the main indice was down well over 2%. But will that CPI help us out and try to give us some direction with what the Federal Reserve is doing and their direction with interest rates? I read a story yesterday. One of the uh, women who's on the Fed board said that as far as she was concerned, there could be two or more interest rate increases still to come. She was yeah. by no means sold on just stopping at one. No, they're all over the place. With you know, That's why they follow what they call a dot plot, what each member thinks that they should do and but uh, there's some that think that they've already gone too far, and there's some that think that two or three more is necessary. And I guess it kind of shows you why there's more than one person involved in that decision. Now, Jerome Powell gets to be the mouthpiece for it, but there's a lot of people involved in that decision. Phil, on the subject of uh, increasing interest rates, are there financial uh, financial strategies you can pursue that would play upon the increase in interest rates? Uh, there is, and you know, with with interest rates coming up, and we're probably at the tip of it. On one hand, you start to look at let's look at the Nasdaq, and and we'll we'll touch on the Nasdaq briefly. But those are growth companies; they don't pay dividends. They're more sensitive to the movement of interest rates, and that's why the Nasdaq struggled last year in comparison to the other two indices because of the majority of what's in there are considered growth companies, technology companies being a big piece of that. So now that we near or whether we're at the end or we're near the end of the fed increasing rates the next step is of course for rate cuts to come about at some point for rate cuts to come about and the nasdaq would be the one that would benefit most from that and we've seen the anticipation of that moving forward this year on the complete opposite end of the spectrum from the nasdaq uh, the nasdaq is probably the most aggressive of, of all the of all the indices that we focus on anyway, not all the indices, but the, the big ones that we focus on are cash rates. And, you know, what we hear a lot in this period of increased interest rates is, you know, cash rates become really attractive. And, and on a broad base, I kind of get it. You know, like, hey, we can get 5% for a three- or six-month term or a CD risk-free rate of return. And what we mean by risk-free rate of return are cash rates is simply those that have a guaranteed return. You don't have to worry about the ups and downs. The mid, most of the time, you're giving up some liquidity, so you can't get to it at any point in order to enjoy those rates. And if you are giving up liquidity, then that rate can change on a daily basis. So, you know, basically, cash rates are more attractive than what they were in the past. However, you know, one question that we run into a lot is, should we have more cash than what we did before that answer is no, unless you've got something coming up, because regardless of the environment, one of the main staples of, of our banking system is that cash rates or risk-free rate of return will not keep pace with inflation. So over your long haul in a planning, from a planning point of view, you have to at least keep up with inflation, hopefully beat inflation and cash it in a part of that equation. But for short-term purposes, you know, I've got something coming up in six months or nine months or even a year where cash is kind of appropriate. You know, college education, auto purchase, my funds for uh, my funds for uh, my, my expenses, just living expenses, that, that is a little bit more attractive. But it does not change the asset allocation as far as where should my assets be split out just because cash rates are better. So when you say talking about cash rates, you're talking about CDs, saving accounts, piggy bank accounts, and the like, right? Yeah, yeah, anything that you can, you're can, you assured that you, don't, you won't lose value. Now, so in CDs, flex savings certificates is what we call them. We call them here, but they're not FDIC insured. But uh, savings accounts, uh, anything of that nature, that we refer to that as cash. It doesn't have to be cash money in your hand. But that is cash simply because there's no risk involved. Wall Street Journal had an article last week, I believe it was, we're talking about the higher bond rates as a result of all that's been going on is endangering any stock rally because the dividend for um, for risk is, is shrinking. You're getting more money for the bonds, so therefore it's not worth taking the risk on the stocks. Um, have what are your thoughts on that? A ten-year Treasury, well, by the way, Phil, is at four point zero eight two percent. Yeah, 
Uh, and you're seeing current or new issue bond rates is what they're referring to. So if there's a bond created, whether it's by a government entity or a corporate entity, those new rates at the moment are going to be paying at a higher rate. Now, what the impact it does have on bonds, and this is where it gets difficult, is most purchases of bonds are secondary purchases. They're bought as they're, they're not from new issues. So those bonds that are pre-existing, bond mutual funds, G fund and those TSP accounts, I know those are really popular around here. The If current interest rates are much higher than what they were before, the secondary market for those pre-existing bonds, the values drop. So that's where you start to look at your portfolio. 2022 was a great example of that because the bond market did, the pre-existing bond market did fall. So it must be a new issue if you're going to take advantage of those higher interest rates. However, you know, I'll, I'll go back to the cash side of things. Uh, simply due to the fact that new issues are more attractive, there's also less issues of new bonds during a period like that because if I am an entity or or a corporation, I don't necessarily want to go issue a bond to build my facility or my school or whatever it may be because I have to pay a higher uh, pay a higher rate back to those to those uh, bondholders than what I would have had to in the past. So I'm also more reluctant to do it. But that accentuates the the desire for bonds because now you've got a bigger demand but less supply. Bill, how do we reach you for more information today, sir? You can reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us with an appointment at 1270 Winchester Avenue right here, Martin Burke. Thank you, Phil. I will talk to you again tomorrow morning at 638. Can't wait. You guys have a great week. You too. Thank you, Phil.